AI can be used to create user interfaces through simply a prompt. There's a few good websites I wanted to explore that do this. One used to be Figma before they took offline their AI features because they were replicating a lot of Apple's interfaces like for like. But in this video, I'll show you a few others that you can use if you wanna jump into this kind of thing to create your own UI designs and then create a website out of them. Let's have a look. My first and one of my favorite examples is V0. It was created by Vercel, one of the biggest hosting companies. So you know they've put a lot of effort into it and it's built on top of Shad CN, which is a very popular component library, and Tailwind CSS, another very popular library for styling components. All you have to do is type in a prompt, like newsletter section, and it generates out different types of UI components for that, such as this example here for a header, or for a full card dashboard, or even just for a hero section. In order to use it, I am most likely going to need to log in. Once I do, I have a number of credits, 700 to start off with, which I can utilize. I can go here and type in a prompt, or I can use an image as a reference. I can also have a private generation, but this does mean that I have to pay extra. While I do get additional credits, maybe this isn't for me and I'm just gonna stick with the free plan so far, which is 200 credits and around 15 generations per day. I can also change the color scheme, but only to these pre-assigned colors. If I want additional colors, I'll need to pay extra. So let's stay on the free tier for now. Let me try this a news letter section as a UI component that I wanna create. <laughs> I like this text that seems to come in as it got generated. So it does have a nice, strong, bold title here with a subtitle. The text seems to make sense. I didn't give it very many specifics, so it's just very general. The input looks good with the subscribe button having a hover effect and a clickable event. Now, if I go to version B, this looks like a dark version of the first one. There is an issue though. The input here isn't centered, so maybe it just didn't update it properly, but it looks like it's made a little bit of a mistake there. And the third one is an example where it's not centered at all, but full width. And again, this one has two issues. While this input isn't centered, if you have a look at these corners just over here, um, they're actually square, while these ones are curved. So I'm not sure exactly what's happening there, but uh, I think something odd's happening. But the first example just over here, this one seems to have worked out quite well, and I would approve this. Let's have a look at what code it provides. So if I select up here, I get the code and I've got two things here. I've got the input as a component of a JSX. I've got a global CSS. I've also got a layout and a tailwind configuration, which I can utilize. If I go over here, this is just basic HTML code. If I, for example, have these styles already for Tailwind CSS. So these are two ways I can copy out the code. So this part here, I can't edit. Well, this part here, I can modify. So I could say change this and it updates the component. So that's pretty cool. I do like the fact that I can customize this component. I could even like remove the header too while making changes to it, while these items kind of had to stay in place. Now I'm gonna head over here to the dark version and I'm gonna make a prompt change. I'm gonna select center the input section. Let's see if this will pick up on the fact that it's aligned left and it'll center. Looks like it hasn't, looks like it just failed or crashed. Let me select back and I've lost my generation. Um, now I do have a option here to go back to it. Uh, here it is. I'm gonna try again. So it's thinking and it's failed. It's failed at centering it. Uh, center everything. How about that? Now that's more specific. All right, it's still failing at centering this. Let me actually have a look at the code. So if you have a look at the border I've placed around it, it's not utilizing the full width. And this is because the max W is just um, confining its size. There we go. So I fixed it myself. I needed to make sure that these items are in a flex and that they're justified all center. And that seems to have fixed it, but it just means that this input isn't as smart as it could be. What if I say change the button, change the button from subscribe to sign up. All right, this one's a little bit more simple. It's changed the button here from subscribe to sign up. However, it's removed the centering that I applied earlier. So I've got a number of history options here where I can see version zero, one, two, three, and four. And if I go to my credits, I've already used up 35 credits, which isn't great, but at least it gives you an example of what this looks like. It's not perfect, but it kind of works. 
So V0 is pretty cool. They do have a number of examples that people have already created, like this dope chat application that looks like WhatsApp. On top of that, it looks like they're continuously adding in updates. Like for example, just recently I saw a post here that said that they're adding responsive design so that all these components actually work on any viewport. So I'm looking forward to see these kind of changes. Now let's move on to the next one. This website here is called Use Galileo. And this website allows you to generate different types of, well, entire websites or applications through text, essentially text to UI, which is a pretty cool concept. They've got ones for the mobile phone, which look pretty good, as well as ones for the web. So I'm really interested to try this out. I'll need to sign up and I'm starting off with 150 credits, which hopefully should be enough. What I'll do is create this prompt to create a design for a pricing table. Ah, and here we go. These are two pretty good examples and they come with Figma design and code as well. And I get all the code available to recreate this. If I look closely, it does kind of look like it's Tailwind CSS, definitely using Tailwind CSS here. I can also pull out the Figma file for this if I select Figma and then it says I just control V it in a Figma file. So let me try that out. Here I have a brand new untitled document. I'll hit control V and there we go. I've got the entire component. And if I have a look, it's even kind of layered really well with some kind of names. I can select these odd options and they're all arranged quite well. I'm kind of surprised. I didn't expect it to do such a good job. So, so far this has done a great job. Let me see if I can have a look at another example here, like this one here. If I select copy to Figma, I just want to see if it'll copy across just as well. So let me zoom out here, paste. And yeah, this one seems to have done the same job. It's got all these different sections. Each one of these layers are made properly with different rows and even the rows themselves move about perfectly. So. Um, yes, I'm really impressed with this export and I think it's time to try another one. And instead of doing a mobile version, let me create a web version. Uh, they've got a couple of examples here, like a settings page to change my account and profile. Uh, so I'm just going to put that in and see what it generates. And here they are. So I've got these two examples. These ones seem to be in dark mode. I've got two variations for both and I think they're okay. They're basic, but they make sense. We've got a logo here at the top, a menu, settings with tabs, and they kind of look like an iOS menu a little bit, but also kind of like what we're seeing more on the web these days. So not a bad job. Now there's another feature I like here called image to UI. And this kind of converts what looks like a image that you can upload and then spits out an actual UI design for it. So I think that's kind of cool and I want to give that a test. So I've got my own website here called Merge Web Dev and this is the one that I'm running on a Wix Studio. Now I've got a couple of different sections here that I like but I want to see if it can recreate this section here where members can join. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this entire page and then I'm going to use this to upload to Galileo. And I'm just asking it to improve on the design. I'll set a basic theme with that same sort of color and select two variations. Unfortunately, these two designs don't actually look that much better than what I already have. You can see that I've got this one here which has, I suppose, a join merge on Discord, name, email, etc. cetera. Um, we've got this one here, but I don't like the white theme. I guess they're clear and simple, but this button is positioned on the center, whereas everything else is aligned to the left. And generally, I'm not a fan of these two designs, but at least it gives you an idea of what you can create. You can still edit it. Um, you can change the theme, for example, and how the curves are happening. And if I apply that, I think it'll regenerate it, but I'm starting to lose a lot of credit. I'm only at 90 left. So I think what it's time for is having a look at what else I can do for this, where I could actually implement it into my site as a practical section. So what I'm thinking is jumping in here again for the text generation, selecting web and asking for a simple prompt, something like, 
a newsletter sign up for new users on a membership website about web design. I've got these two examples and while they don't look particularly great, uh, I can get enough inspiration or even copy them out to Figma to reuse if I wanted to. The first thing I would do is reposition them so that they're all center uh, and I'd have to select the correct groups to do that because currently the alignment is a little bit off and I think that's good enough for me to utilize my plugin. A plugin called the Figma to Wix Studio plugin allowing me to open up that file and directly export it straight into my Wix Studio website. And there it is. It still might need a little bit of adjusting in case I have custom fonts and maybe a couple of items I can center a little bit better or resize and adjust. But for the most part, this is more or less how easy it is to now create custom elements using AI and then just import them straight into your website. Let's move on to the next example. This one here is one of my favorites. It's called a Reloom. And Reloom is one that doesn't just do the user interface for a website. It also does kind of the sitemap and a bit of a style guide. And I've used them before. I've been really impressed. A web design course for developers. It's going to start building out the sitemap, as you can see here, nav, hero, features, benefits, and start building out the pages as well, like about us, courses, blog. And this is really cool. It does this so quickly and efficiently. In terms of the wireframe, it also starts building these out. You can see it doing so in real time. And after this is done, I should be able to also copy this out straight to Figma using the Figma plugin. And then I can plug this into my own website. And here's another example, web crumbs. This one allows you to use AI to also create types of components. So I'm going to create this one over here. It says a profile card with an avatar on top. Let's just select to create this one as an example. And here it is. It's a pretty simple one, but it has a lot of the elements I like. It's got good contrast here. It's got a bit of a box shadow, rounded corners. So not bad for a pretty simple thing. And I can also export the code here directly to React to HTML. Though I don't see one for Figma, which would be much more useful, I think, if I could. I'm already impressed with what AI can generate in terms of artwork with websites like Midjourney. But AI components, well, that's something completely different. And now I realize that it's on its way. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below.